I talked to your producer, and this is going to be an interview with the sock puppet. With oh, me. okay. Well, that's and great, yeah. If it's about me, I don't want to do this. I want it to be about the sock okay. puppet. Hello, Louise. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about Firebase rules. I'm over here. Okay, yeah, but I, I, I've never... I've never done something like this before, so uh, just, you know. Why is uh, it so hard for you? My eyes are over I'm, here, Doug. Sure, but I've never really talked to a sock puppet before. I don't know how to address. It's just like talking to anybody else. Well, not exactly. I mean, I, it's not a human face. That's <laughs> what I'm usually accustomed to. What are you trying to, to say, Doug? Well, I'm saying this is, I just want to make sure you're comfortable with this because I'm, this is my first I'm time doing something. I'm very comfortable with this. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll, it we'll, seems we'll do like this you're way. not comfortable. No, I'm not terribly comfortable, but I just want to make sure this goes smoothly. I think that's not happening. Okay, well, let me shift my attention Where's to Louise. Where's your producer? I think I had a conversation. We talked about this. Fine. Whole show, just like this. Fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, and on the show with me today is Rachel Myers. Rachel, thanks for being on the show. I'm glad to be here. And welcome to the fire basement. What it's do you very nice. What do you think of the place? I like the decor. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cutting edge, right? Yeah, it so. feels like it has a, it has a vibe. It does. It is. We had some uh, advice about how to work things differently, but uh, I like it the way it is. So. Okay, I think you should keep it. So, Rachel, tell me, uh, what do you do with the Firebase team? I work on security roles, and then I have one foot that lives in cloud, and I work on events and policy. Okay, so security roles meaning what exactly? The configuration that you can put into any backend uh, product from Firebase to configure who can access it. Okay, so that's real-time database, Firestore, Fire and storage. And, and storage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Um, they're, they're very important. Like I, I think it's kind of understated how important security rules are um, and because of the way that Firebase backend services work. What are some of the things that you think every developer needs to know about security rules? Wow. OK. Um, here's the first thing. If you, have, if you have two security rules that both match a path, um, those, those rules are ORed together, not ANDed together. Okay. So if one grants access and the other denies access, access is granted. Okay. That, that's something that I think is, um, we say it in the docs, but I think if you're just like using your rules, you might assume the other the other way. You might assume that they're ANDed and, you ha and all of these things have to be true in order okay. to get access. Okay. I think that's like the primary message to get out. Okay, so if you're looking at some rules that reject access, you could very easily have some other rules somewhere else that allow access that's unexpectedly. Exactly right. Okay, yeah. and so that could be a problem if you're trying to lock down user, per user access. You have to read all your rules. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything we can do to, to help with that? Because it seems like that's that could be something that's very easy to trip up. So we have a simulator in both um, store or in both a uh, Firestore and Real-Time Database. Okay. And you can try a path and it will show you all the lines that match. Okay, okay. So, so if you have multiple rules that all match, it will show you each and every one of them. It will highlight match. all of them. For okay, you. okay. The caveat to that is um, if it's at the very top, then I think it short circuits it. So um, that we can improve. Mm, yeah, that's we, can improve. Feature, <laughs> we can improve it. I just talked myself into a feature request. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll log a bug for that okay. after this. You know, Thank we you. We're, we're looking out for developers. We're gonna we're gonna fix all this. Thank and you. anything else about security roles that you think people should know? Oh gosh, there's a lot. Um, yeah. Let's see. I think I think the most important thing is to not think of it as an afterthought. To think about security rules when you're structuring your data, to think about security rules as an essential part of your app. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is something I fall into a lot, is uh, when you create a new database, you're asked now that it's been changed whether, whether or not you want to start in open mode or in locked mode. And it's really easy to just want to start in open mode. Like I start all of my little like side projects in open mode because I don't want to mess with it at the yeah. beginning, right? It feels like it slows things down. But then I forget later, right? So what? How how can we how can we help people remember to go back into like a, a locked mode where you're actually using some form of authentication? So we're, we we want to work on things that uh, that will remind people. But um, before those things are out, we just want to tell people um, before it goes out to users, it's important to go back and lock them down. I do the same thing when I when I create a new project. 
I start off in open mode because I don't know what my data is going to look like. It doesn't make sense to write mm -hmm. rules if I don't if I'm going to move my data. Right, around. just playing around. Exactly. Iterating quickly. Yeah. yeah. So I start in open mode, but as soon as I know what kind of shape my data is going to live in, I immediately jump back in. And um, as I'm designing my like how my data should look, I'm also thinking, okay, I want this to be separate because I want it to have separate access controls. Right. Right. So it, it sounds like what you're talking about is some form of organization within your roles, because I know that sometimes, and this gets asked a lot. Um, Say you have some user data and you want some of it to be public and some of it to be private. Right. And you can't have, like within, say, Firestore, one document, you can't protect some fields in a document to be public and some to be private. Right. right. It's best to write rules at a document level. So right. it might be, yeah, you need to write rules at a document level. So if you have two things that you want that are like, say, a user profile, some of it's private, some of it's public, write two different documents, mm -hmm. have a public profile and a, and a private profile. Right. So, so you probably need two collections for that. Yeah, thing. I would do a sub-collection. Yeah. Oh, situation. a sub-collection. I oh. probably. You... I don't know. It depends mm -hmm. what, what else you're doing, but like... You could do a subcollection of private data. But there, but there is some organization that's required. Yes. So you have to like think through that. Yeah. Uh, think about how you want to both pull your data back to the user, and then also think about how you want to protect it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's okay. what I would do. So speaking of organization, in a very general sense, um, that's kind of a big deal for you in your personal life. Oh my right? gosh, I love I love to organize everything. <laughs> okay, yeah. tell me about that. My favorite stores are Muji and Container Store. Okay, I've never heard of Muji. What's that? Sorry um, to interrupt, but <laughs> I want to know what that is. It's a store that has um, not very fancy things but very like um, practical things it works really well for small spaces and I live in San Francisco so I you know yeah, I not have a whole small lot of space, space. Yeah. exactly okay um, I don't live in a shoebox anymore I moved up so I have like a I don't know a medium-sized box uh, a boot box yeah exactly <laughs> okay, I live in a right. boot box. you gotta step up so what kind of tips do you have for people to or um, get their homes organized so I went full in on Marie Kondo, and okay. I I got rid of everything that didn't bring me joy, and it ends up it's really funny if you if you do that seriously you end up with such a weird set of stuff. So like I got rid of all of my jeans. I had to go buy all new jeans because apparently none of my jeans brought me joy, but all of my socks brought me joy. Okay, that's good. I didn't have a lamp after I did that. I went out and bought a lamp that has like it's a little it's a ceramic bulldog. Okay. With a lampshade on top of it. Which is absurd, but I'm so happy every time I turn the light on, right? Now I use my lamp every day because I love turning the Okay, so you have a, it's, it's practical and it brings you joy. It's practical in that it's a lamp. It's right. not practical, nothing else about it is practical. Okay. It's, it's absurd <laughs> right, and I right. love it. But it brings you joy, right? It, so it yes, fills exactly. two roles. It's exactly. not just, it's utilitarian and... Happy making. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's important, right? Yeah. So uh, changing gears a little bit, one of the things we do from time to time on the Firebase team is hold something called a Hack Week, oh, yeah. where we split off into teams and work of some work on something of maybe personal interest or you know whatever you want to work on. Um, you enjoy that, right? I love it. Okay, okay. So tell me, what kind of things do you build for Hack Week? So I work on security roles, and I like to build things um, for Hack Week that further that make it easier to use security roles. Okay. So um, for the first Hack Week, I was at. We made a, um, it's a version history of all of the rules that you've previously published. It only shipped for Firestore. We'd like to get it out to the other backend services soon. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some, there's some reasons we can't do it. So the reason I love this is because it was really common for me to, um, to like make a mistake in my rules, to not realize that I had made a mistake and to hit publish. Mm -hmm. And then only after I realized like, you know, a few days later that I had this like, this flaw in my rules, I'd try to go back. If I hadn't put it in version control, it was just kind of lost. Right, the right. So um, we shipped a feature in one week where we um, we gave you a sidebar that has all of the different versions of the of rules that you've ever published. You can go back to any of them. You can highlight them. You can pull it back into You can compare it with whatever is current. Oh, so, so you get a diff to see exactly what exactly. changed. The diff, is, the diff is a really nice feature. That was that was a nice to have for me, and I love it now that it's in. Okay, yeah. For those of us who again are just hacking around, maybe we don't put our uh, rules in uh, in source control. It's like having source control built into the into exactly. the product. So um, you probably know uh, that I travel a lot for work, and you travel a lot for work, and we've traveled to some of the pla same places. Um, is that something you always imagined yourself doing? So when I was um, when I was like fifteen, there was like a like a school organized trip 
which was great for all the parents that were like, oh my God, get rid of my teenager mm -hmm. for the summer. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I was like by far the most, like, so there were, there were like 30 of the kids and I was by far the most into it. I was like, I want to, like, I was reading books on like the ride over. I was like, I want to know about this place. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've always enjoyed traveling. I've enjoyed seeing new places, learning okay. new things. Okay. So what do you enjoy outside of Firebase? So I heard you like campy pop music. Is that oh, true? Yes. Okay. What do you, um, what, do, what do you listen to? Oh gosh, I listen to some really terrible things. So I still listen to Spice Girls for fun. <laughs> so uh, one last question. Um, what is your biggest ambition in life? Uh, it's kind of a broad question. To quote Beyonce, to be happy. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's fair. What what <laughs> makes you happy? What's your what's your pursuit? That, that Let's makes see. You happy? My ambition in life. I want to make cool things. I want to do good work. I want to um, like I, I enjoy like the, one of the reasons that Hack Week really appeals to me is that I like just like making things happen and working at a large company like Google. Sometimes it can be really hard to. Um, like push things forward at a quicker pace. So I love chances where there's like a little bit or the, like where the waves just part a little bit and you can just like push things. Mm -hmm. So uh, like, so before, before I joined Google, I started a company called Absolutely and it was really fun because you could just like do like that there was nothing in your way. You could just like try lots of things. Mm -hmm. It was like frustrating for other reasons. Like we have a lot more resources here. So we have like a lot of things we can try, but. Right, like, right. So getting to like do things and try things is like really mm -hmm. uh, something I find really motivating. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm kind of a startup guy too. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I came from a startup. That's how I landed at Google. Um, there's little bits of me that like looks at things like Hack Week and oh, I can do whatever I want. You know, yeah. <laughs> I can like use Google resources to play with something. Exactly. So that's, yeah, I, I dig that. So uh, speaking of Hack Week, you have a, you have a sock, I not do. just any sock. So though. this is, this is a sock puppet. Should, I, should okay. I, let me see, this gives eyes on straight here, her eyes on straight. Hi, Doug. Hi, sock puppet. <laughs> My name's Louise. Oh, hi, Louise. <laughs> so we, this feels very awkward. I feel like I shouldn't be talking to a sock puppet. Why not? What do you mind? What's wrong? Because <laughs> I can see your mouth moving with the sock puppet. That's why. Don't look at her. <laughs> Can't help it. Okay, so <laughs> the, the story behind the sock puppet. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that, so for Hack Week, we went to try to, dim, we, so we were presenting what we made for Hack Week, and we went to try to show the problem that developers could have that we're solving by showing like the rule history, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to, like we, we wanted to tell a little story if we acted like that was the quickest way to do it, right? It's boring to say, like sometimes you commit a bad rule change, blah, 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 like that would be very boring. Sure. So instead we put our socks on our hands. They were clean, I think. Um, I hope. Um, you wouldn't want to use a dirty sock for a sock. We might have. <laughs> um, we, t we had post-it notes and pens. So we drew eyes on post-it notes and stuck that to our socks. Um, and then we acted out uh, the problem. And it's really great because a sock puppet can have some over-the-top emotions that well, we, sure. we probably wouldn't express if it was just us. Right? <laughs> I see, I see. We're, we're like, as humans, we're a little bit more like emotionally even keeled. The sock puppet can go crazy! Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of fun and dramatic. It was a fun way to like demonstrate things. I see, I see. And then we had another hack week and we also demoed it with our sock puppets. Um, so it's just become a thing now that when I'm gonna demo something, I just put a sock on my hand and I- <laughs> Go nuts with it? Yeah, this is who presents the problem. And then we I can see. and then we can step in with the solution. Is the sock puppet developer persona, is that what you've done? Uh, so normally I have a polka dot sock that is my sock puppet developer persona. Okay. This, that one was in the laundry today, so okay. I had to bring, this is like my backup developer persona. So you wear your socks and then use them as sock puppets, yeah. okay. Now I understand why your socks bring you so much joy, as you said <laughs> earlier. <laughs> You play, you wear them, and then you play with them. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's beautiful. A, yes, double duty. <laughs> well, I'm glad you have fun at Hack Week, and I and I do too. And I, your your first presentation with the sock puppet. I I don't know if uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I saw it on screen, but I couldn't hear it because there was a problem in the in the video for our room here in Mountain View. So I, I remember seeing these sock puppets on screen. I had no idea what was going on, and I didn't even know it was you there. So <laughs> thanks for giving me the insider view of that. So you just got to see some puppets. I just saw this. All I saw was sock puppet and I did we could hear nothing we could see some things but that was it it wow. was kind of frustrating yeah that's a terrible experience I'm sorry. yeah yeah well 
maybe next time. Okay. <laughs> well, Rachel, thanks for being on the show. And oh, uh, I'm just taking a shot of myself up at hand. <laughs> thanks for being on the show. It was great. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you want to subscribe right here on the Firebase channel, you can get more great video content just like this, more Meet Firebase, more Ask Firebase, more video tutorials, and I'll see you here next time. Thanks for watching. I see you looking at Rachel a lot, and it's making me self-conscious. I'm over here. Doug, you're being a weirdo. <laughs> Why can't you just be normal? This is not normal for me, I'm sorry. <laughs>